Hey everyone, uh, this is Baumik and welcome to Cybersecurity TV. Uh, in this uh, video, we're going to talk about the basics of the cross-site scripting. But my plan is to create the entire series of like, you know, starting from the basics and then probably we can go deep dive and, you know, probably look about like how do we exploit the issues, what you can do exploiting cross-site scripting and explore, uh, you know, different tools and th things like that. So uh, do subscribe if you have not already, uh, but let's get started. So in this uh, particular, uh, you know, uh, video, we got, let's start with the what is cross-site scripting. So as a rule, XSS occurs when a browser renders untrusted content in a trusted environment. So if the content is, you know, uh, contains any dynamic language, such as HTML, JS, or any other uh, scripting language, then it would execute inside your, uh, you know, uh, response or the HTML response. And that's where the XSS occurs. So uh, let, so like you know let's talk about the different type of access first and then uh, I'll, I'll give you some you know probably we will go through some some sample code on how does the access really work so there are two types of access one is server side the second one is the client side uh, server side uh, again broke it down into two different uh, categories so one is the reflected uh, the second one is persistent or stored access uh, Again, client side, we have two categories. Uh, one is DOM cross-site scripting and the second one is universal cross-site scripting. Now the basic says like, you know, uh, for example, let's hear. So you have HTML uh, tag. So anything within the HTML tag, like, you know, browser will consider this like to execute because it's a dynamic language and browser runs by instruction. So it will go line by line and it will execute whatever it's written there. Now within the HTML tags, you have you could have various tags like a bold tag, or you have like you know a href tag, or, or you could pretty much like you know uh, write anything. Now within those tags, you are, for example, let's say uh, you know we, we talk about the JavaScript uh, like cross site scripting using JavaScript payload. So within the HTML, you have a script tag. Now in the script tag you are writing your normal JS code on whatever function. So if you are doing a math function like, you know, three plus four or whatever you have to do. So you can assign uh, values to the variables and you can do um, like, you know, all sort of different operations. Now in that particular uh, function, if you are accepting a user input and you are not validating it, of course, like, you know, that's why cross-site scripting happens. Like you do not uh, filter uh, the user input. So let's say you are accepting, you know, any value from the user, uh, for example, uh, any string. Now user provides a string. Uh, now being an attacker, instead of providing a string, I would provide a GS payload, which could be, uh, you know, alert one, two, three, or alert your, you are hacked or anything. So that's that one now will be part of this, you know, uh, HTML page and within the Java uh, script tag. Now, when that page will be rendered on your uh, browser or the user's browser, it's going to execute and it's going to do the whatever attacker has provided as an input. Now, using cross-site scripting, uh, you can do several things. So, like, you know, if attacker uh, wrote a script where it could steal the... Uh, users cookie value and you send it back to the server that the attacker is uh, managing it so like you know it's gonna send all the cookie information whenever uh, a user is being tricked or exploited now let's talk about like you know a different type of access and and what could like how each one could go wrong so with the cross-site scripting uh, reflected uh, here's the workflow so how it works is first attacker would create a malicious link. So for example, let's say STP XYZ.com uh, question mark. There is a search parameter. So search is equal to uh, script alert uh, one, two, three script. So they'll send it to user, user clicks on it. It will, of course it will, the request will go to the XYZ.com. There are no validation on the server side. So uh, like, you know, I, the input, so whatever the input was to the search parameter alert one two three will be like executed on the user's browser. Now, as I saw, like you know, as I told you before, so attacker could get uh, cookie information, could steal cookie information. So in that case, uh, it's going to be executed, and the website will send all the information, like you know, browser sends all the private data to the attacker site. 
but to make it work like you know uh, uh, reflect across the scripting attacker has to be smart because if you send someone uh, where, where you know in the search parameter it can clearly sh see that there is some sort of you know fishy payload like alert and script and all those things then user won't click on it so you would have to trick the user so you would have to craft the links then you have to like you know social engineer the user and then you will also have to obfuscate the url because like you know if it's a simple text plain text url anyone can see and understand this is fishy and they'll not click on it so you have to do all of these things and then trick the user and that's when the reflector cross-site scripting happens again this is you know one time so for example if you have 100 if you want to exploit 100 users you would have to send the link to the 100 users they will have to click on it so when they click on it it's going to exploit now let's talk about the stored xss and this is my favorite any attacker's favorite cross-site scripting so in this one uh, it's a simple scenario so let's say, uh, you know, uh, here's the attacker and here's the server. So like, you know, XYZ server, uh, this is the server. And uh, let's assume this application is, you know, HR record. So like, it, it, like you know, it, it creates a user profile and stores user profile in the database or file system. Now what attacker can do is it could inject uh, the JavaScript. So in our example, uh, it's a script alert one, two, three, or like, you know, uh, script alert document dot cookie or script doc, like, you know, you could also redirect user. You can also deface the entire application. Pretty much anything you can do. So attacker being have access to that particular site, it's gonna inject the script into the victim server. So now that payload is now saved in the database. So like, you know, you are not so in the reflected we were sending this payload to the user here we are storing that payload into the victim server in the database system now imagine whoever have access to the xyz.com or whoever accesses this page is gonna get exploited because whenever uh, you know user is going to go to the view user profile page or any page where it would fetch the record from the database along with the records it's gonna also fetch the script which attacker has injected here at the first place so now like you know server will send the bad script to the victim and victim will get exploited now uh, the reason I said like you know it's my favorite because one time you inject the script and then you don't have to worry about the social engineering you don't have to worry about like you know crafting the link sending to the user if there are like you know thousand people uh, uh, accessing that server or that application they all will be affected and this is like you know simple ex like the simple example of this could be a blogging uh, application so where you have the blog uh, after the blog is completed you are allowed to write the comments and if the comment box is not protected I can write my script and I can save it to the server and every time whoever reads the blog uh, they're gonna got exploited so that's how simple it is now OASP has a good example uh, that we just talked about so if you want to take a look so here it is so if you see here so this is the page of the uh, application and instead of email like you know valid email let's say uh, we enter some malicious code so like you know it's gonna store to the backend system and every time someone opens up the user profile page uh, this will be fetched back here and they're gonna get executed so it is that simple uh, alright so let's see okay uh, alright so let's talk about the DOM XSS uh, here the scenario is a little bit different so earlier two access that we talked about was a server side XSS now we, we are talking about the client side cross site scripting so now what happens here is the attacker is going to craft the url containing the malicious string and send it to the victim now victim is going to click on it so this is so far this is similar to reflected cross site scripting so victim or the user is going to click on it it's going to, to this like you know server like application server or the website uh, website receive the request but does not include malicious string in the response 
because you know again this is not a server side vulnerability this is a client side code where you have something written on the client side page where you are using javascript or something and that's being exploited so the website uh, you know sends back sends the response back to the user or i would say user's browser now the user browser execute the script inside the response causing the malicious script to be inserted into the page so and like you know again so malicious script whatever it is it's gonna get executed so here the the thing is uh, all right so let's first take a look at the example here so i'll go back to the oasp site uh, where we have the example so for example in this website you could select the language so it allows you to select the language and there's a little you know js code here so in this js code uh, you could uh, select uh, the language so you know the default parameter here you could select language probably french or you know english or whatever it is now the the key part here in the dom exercise is this is a client side code like this is not somewhere stored on the server side so that's the difference so now in this value like instead of french what if the attacker writes this one it will obviously get executed because you know there is no protection here and when browser says this value it's gonna fetch the cookie from the dom and give it back to the attacker so that's how it works now let's uh, see you know uh, what attacker can gain like you know after exploiting all these things so attacker could obtain urls attacker could obtain history cookie information local storage so i have also seen you know uh, many software developer uh, tend to uh, save a lot of sensitive information in the browser local storage which is not a good practice uh, it should be avoided because if you happen to have a DOM access, uh, somebody could steal all this information. Uh, the only thing uh, with the DOM access is it's very hard to find. Like, you know, uh, of course, you can take help of the automated tools, uh, which would uh, make your task a little easier. But still, uh, it's it's very difficult to find DOM based accesses. In my experience, I, I have, you know, out of 10 applications, I would find six or seven times reflected or stored than the dom accesses but of course like you know feel free to visit this link on the OWASP site uh, they have a good example and explanation as well in case you have any further questions and let's talk about the last one uh, which is universal accesses uh, so at, earlier whatever access we talked about reflected dom or stored accesses they had to do something with the web application code server side code or client side code uh, you know, but this one it's a little different because here you're dealing with the plugins or extension So nowadays we all use browser and we all use plugins and add-ons, uh, you know install in the browser So this cross site scripting happens if your plugins or browser extension is not secure Sometimes I all seen like, you know application also make use of certain plugins sometime I have also seen uh, you know uh, you also get a task of like pen testing plugins so you have to make sure like plugins can also if it's a browser plugin somebody could still exploit it and simple example is like you know word reference extension where you can see uh, there's a search box uh, you can put the payload in there and then you know uh, someone can easily exploit because there is no protection there uh, so this is uh, pretty much all I wanted to talk about like you know give some real basic idea on what is cross-site scripting of course as we move along in this entire web series uh, I'm, I'm gonna like you know uh, talk about various approach on how to exploit we'll talk about the real world examples and that would make it like you know probably more easier uh, for someone to understand uh, we'll also talk about the B framework uh, my favorite to exploit the cross-site scripting so if you happen to find cross-site scripting how do you exploit it so we'll also talk about that and then along with these uh, all this uh, uh, cross-site scripting vulnerabilities we'll also talk about all other application vulnerabilities as well so uh, that's everything for now uh, please hit like if you enjoy this video please subscribe uh, so you can you know uh, get notification and then you can
uh, watch my future videos as well um, and if you have any questions feedback please feel free to drop me a comment I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible uh, in the description I have also listed down all my uh, favorite books for the information security I have 10 plus years of experience so I have read many books and and I just like you know I just thought maybe uh, if somebody's just starting their career in the penetration testing it might be helpful so please go that and check it out and that's all uh, thank you for watching and see you guys next time